The eighth and largest New Zealand Geographic Photographer of the Year exhibition features 47 incredible finalists. Christchurch had their turn last month and the exhibition is currently in Auckland. New Zealand Geographic editor James Franken joins us now to tell us about some of these spectacular photos. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome James. Thank, Thank you. you James for being here. Um, what an incredible job. How did you get involved with all of this? Oh, I started out in architecture of all things mm -hmm. and then moved into a bit of filmmaking and uh, did some photography and then moved into the lucrative world of, uh, of publishing. The nice. lucrative here, world. I think here I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is your camera? Uh, no, not specifically my camera, but uh, it's the one that you know I would use on a daily basis if I was going out to shoot something. But equally, you can shoot something on a phone as well. It's about proximity to your subject. It's yeah. about knowing your subject. But I think having one of these massive lenses would be some sort of bonus, surely. <laughs> surely, yeah. It's great. That's right. You fell the part anyway. Uh, so this is the largest New Zealand Geographic Photographer of the Year exhibition that's ever been staged. That's right, yeah. We've got 47 prints in it, um, although it started with 3,500 entries. And so oh. it was a hell of a job to whittle it down. Yeah, and how does that job go because yeah, that sounds that? a mammoth. Yeah, we have uh, two other judges as well, and each one is assigned uh, a couple of categories, and you sort of go through your category and very carefully sort of look at them all half a dozen times, really, to get all the way down to what you think are the, the top sort of 50, and then they're all discussed among the group, and you decide for yourselves then. Let's have a look at some of those pictures, shall we? Because I'll tell you what, these are spectacular. So what do you think, what, it, what it does it actually take to make an award-winning photo? It, it takes a really special perspective, basically. It's about, it, for in terms of aerial photography, it's about yeah. getting over the top of your subject and offering a view that you've never seen before. Um, in terms of wildlife, it might be getting closer. It might be uh, going to places that you've, uh, people don't get to see. Uh, going to all the corners of our realm, it might be Antarctica or up in the Tokelau. Mm. Or something that's like a little slight difference on the, on the, a twist on things, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. It's I, about perspective and I giving new insights. A really yeah. good um, uh, series and they were dogs catching treats and they, the photographer <laughs> had taken the pictures right there and the dog was trying to catch a treat in the mouths and everything and it was like, wow, I'd never thought exactly. of it that way. That sort of stuff plays wonderfully on social. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> As you can it imagine. And it's intimate, isn't it? And yeah. look, we just saw some photos before and a couple of them were aerial shots. So have you seen a dramatic increase in aerial shots thanks to drones? Yes, of course. So people have been taking aerial shots forever, you know, on, on uh, helium balloons and, and through um, planes and from helicopters, but now drones make it possible, even on a consumer basis, for an off-the-shelf product and to take your own pictures from the aerial perspective, which, again, it's all about perspective, it's about new insights. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a look at some landscape yeah. shots here. Um, what makes a good photo, do you reckon? Well, an image like this was shot in Antarctica, and so it's pretty hard to get there, obviously. <laughs> yeah. It's pancake ice, and that's not available to everyone. But it gives us all a new understanding of what is part of our territory. You know, this is uh, part of the New Zealand dependency. Mm, that's beautiful, eh? Wow, you know, this is uh, um, an international photographer, but it came to New Zealand and, and photographed on top of Mount Ruapehu. Is that a person on the, on the top there? It's, it was actually his mountain guide that climbed up that peak. He got them to run over there and climb that hill. Uh, wow. so that he could get a, decent a bit shot. further back, a yeah. bit further back. Keep <laughs> going. Yeah. That, but that looks incredible when you see that, don't you? That perspective. Absolutely. And there's things that play tricks in the eyes. So there's mm. a very abstracted shot of um, Lake Matheson. Um, Oh, and right, so, that's a reflection, of course. Exactly, yeah. So it, it's a, about seeing things in new ways as well and even seeing your society in new ways too. Oh, I love that one. What's yeah. that misty red crater? It's exactly, it's red crater. It's the um, mist running over the top of it on uh, Mount Tongarero uh, and the cloud blowing past in a, in a long exposure. So, so some of the... Um, so so some of, the, some of the photos, I mean, are obviously gorgeous landscapes, but then others yes. really tell a story, don't they? I mean, yeah. is that what the, the competition's all about? Exactly. It's about understanding New Zealand's environment and society in a new way and seeing it all in a new light. And it, it might be shots of landscapes, it might be shots of wildlife, but also ourselves. It's pictures of the people of New Zealanders um, going about their daily lives of special events like this at Parihaka. Um, and it, it's about uh, new insights and fresh insights into Gosh, who we are great. as a people. Um, shots of uh, Christchurch, you know, in, in the middle of its demolition, basically, and the, the new life that's growing up through it as the trees grow in the, in the rubbles of the structure. Um, so it's about seeing us all in a, in a new way. Mm -hmm. mm. And what, you know, they do say a picture says a thousand words, and what I love about this exhibition is as it's grown over the years, and, and you get, you know, yeah. photos like that, you can actually just stand there and look at them. Very evocative, aren't they? Yeah, and just mm. think yeah. about life in general, and if you can't get to the exhibition, don't worry, because we'll show you how you can see the photos. We're going to come back yeah. and talk more very soon. Yeah, we'll talk more about the People's Choice Award, because I'm pretty fascinated yeah. how that gets undone. Exactly. Uh, and how very that good. works... 
We are here with New Zealand a Geographic Editor James Frankham, who's been showing us some of the amazing work that is part of the New Zealand Geographic Photographer of the Year exhibition. So we've seen some photos, we're going to see some more in just a minute. Um, People's Choice Awards, uh, what is that about and how do people get to vote? Well, after the judges, three judges are done with their judging and they've gone through the three and a half entry, three and a half thousand entries and got it down to about 47. Uh, then it's up to the public to make their own choice and they can be the judge for themselves. And very often uh, people choose different uh, images than what the judges have chosen for themselves. Mm. And uh, so, yeah, everybody can vote online or at the exhibition. Um, just go to the website. So what's the criteria, though, to get into the first place to be in those 3,000 entries? Mm. I mean, can you use filters and things? Like, could I put a Clarendon filter on my Instagram shot and enter <laughs> that? I mean, how does it work? Yeah, you can use global adjustments, what we call global adjustments. So you can't add anything to the photo or take anything away from the photo, but you can yeah. use global adjustments across the wall, contrast well, curves nice, and that sort of thing. Yeah, but uh, basically it, these are, this is a competition that celebrates the real New Zealand. It's real photography. It's a photography not competition, not a Photoshop competition. All right, so don't put that filter on that smooths out all the wrinkles of everyone. No, one no that's, that's that. right. Oh, we want to see New Zealand anyway. warts and all. And that's this is warts and all, isn't it? I mean, this is a whole lot of people <laughs> just glued to their cell phones. That's a good photo to capture. Exactly. Um, and this one here, incredible too. What is that one, James? Yeah, that's up at Waitangi, uh, uh, shot by Cameron McLaren. And it's a very, very tight shot right over the top of a waka as they um, mm. paddle in. Beautiful. I like that. Black and white too looks good. Mm. Okay, and this one here, what have we got? This is obviously in the wildlife so that's section. A, yeah, that's the New Zealand falcon, a karere, Wow. Um, out in the snow. And so often it's really tempting to use a giant lens like this and yeah. try and get in um, really, really close mm. to your subject. But sometimes it's nice to back off as well and show a lot of the context too. Yeah. How many actually, uh, how many out of the finalists that you've got are professional photographers and how many of them are amateur? Do you know that? Yeah, of the finalists, it's about half and half. And wow. so oh, that means pretty. that on their best day, an amateur can take a photo every bit as good as a yep. pro. Nice. But given that there aren't as many pros as there are amateurs yeah. in New Zealand, it really shows you that the pros can really make their they own luck know. on any Although you, you actually haven't seen my beautiful sunsets on my I phone, seen you which <laughs> I will show you later because I'm known for my sunsets oh, and my sunrise. Oh, what a show. We're you can enter time. next year. Yeah, I will be entering next year. You mark my words on that. Well, it's, it sounds fantastic. So get along to the spectacular photography exhibition in Auckland if you can. Otherwise, check out the amazing photographs online. Winners are going to be announced on 27th of October, and the exhibition runs until 6th of November.